with no lamps here this morning, but uh, I did say that Terry was watching from a distance uh, for Sunday school this morning. She and or the girls, what they usually do on Sunday after competition really has been over, they have classes and there are lots of uh, very experienced and well-trained dancers that conduct workshops and so forth, so they train. It's a good opportunity to be with some people who've been dancing for a long time. I've never been a dancer. Always wished I could dance at all. Uh, <clears throat> I think dancing was invented so that young men could hold young ladies in their arms. And then the 60s came along and we started doing the jerk and the swim and the twist. And I think it missed the whole point. <laughs> Jumping up and down and, and uh, spinning around on the dance floor. No, it, uh, we, we, we need an excuse to hold a girl's hand or, or to uh, place our hand around on their back or, and dance to slow dancing music. Uh, that's just my philosophy on life. You can take that and say, well, Brother John obviously is an expert on those things. <laughs> so, no dancing for me, but uh, it, uh, so I don't think all kind of dancing is approved, and, and maybe to some, none. But anyway, they're not here today, but they may be watching, and this, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, goes with the message. This, uh, we meet people. I, I do object lessons and I, I take lots of different things and I say this is this and that is that. And uh, so to, to demonstrate things or to do an illustration, I, I tell stories and things like that. I give illustrations. And, and uh, there's a lady named Marie Gravett and she was a member of the Willie Springs Baptist Church. And she was a sweet lady. She lived by herself. She was a widow. And uh, she uh, passed away a couple of years ago, and, and I had not seen her in a long time. Someone uh, reached out to me and said, did you know that Marie had passed away? And she, I know that she is with the Lord right now, but Marie gave me this. It's a, it's a baby food jar, and it's full of two things. And uh, she, she gave me the, she said, I know you like to do things like this. And she said, I want you to have this. I, it's kind of homemade. I don't know where she got it. I got the idea, but this is the very one. This is not one that I, this is, I've had this a long time. <laughs> a very long time. And uh, I have lots of things uh, on my shelves or in boxes uh, at home. And so the Lord says, won't you need to do this or that? Well, let me show you this. This is, this is what this is about. And I think of Marie and actually uh, just uh, remembering having prayed for her and know that all of her life, she prayed for me and loved me as her pastor. It means so much to me. But this has two things in it. It's full of grains of rice. I don't know if you can tell. If I were sitting where you are, I, I couldn't tell. I just had to take my word for it. It's full of just dried grains of rice. And there's also a pecan in there. Anybody from Georgia? What is it in, in Georgia? Pecan. A pecan. If I pastured also in Arkansas, do you know what they call a crappie there? Crappie. Crappie? Crappie. I wouldn't eat anything called a crappie. <laughs> I'd throw it back in. Tomato, tomato, I guess, huh? Potato, potato. A pecan in there. Let me show you something. I've got an empty glass here. Just a juice glass. This is really not a trick. Uh, it's just, it really is a, a message. Let me take this uh, top off and show you. There's the rice. Let's see if it comes out. There it is. There it goes. It's gone. One of those tricks you don't get out of practice. It's too messy. Not as messy as a liquid trick. Hmm. 
in the nation that we live in, and also the fact that you and I are not only American citizens, U.S. citizens, but we're Christians. We have a lot of wonderful liberties and freedoms. We should have a better understanding and concept of what it means to be free. Jesus called it free indeed. I mean, <laughs> what we would say is really free about being free. We can, God often gives us the freedom and the liberty to decide what comes into our life, what we can embrace, what we can put into our heart and our pockets and our lives, and what we can keep out. As a matter of fact, he's very interested. You know, it's a strange thing. I, I know God knows everything, and he even knows the future, but I, I'm, I'm just really blown away when it says there in the book of Genesis that God brought Adam, the very first man, and he sat him down here and he, he gave him a job. He said, I want you to name all of the animals. And, and the Bible says because he wanted to know, God wanted to know what he would call them. I think that was probably funny. Hey, that's a monkey. <laughs> that's a giraffe. That's a penguin. It's a funny story. And I think God in his omnipotence and his omniscience can, can kind of bar himself off and decide, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to turn my superpowers down or my divine powers down because I think he was allowing himself to be genuinely entertained or amused or surprised. You could say, well, no, he knew what Adam was, what Adam was going to say. Uh, how, how tedious that would be if you knew what everybody was going to say before they said it or do before they did it. Well, God has that ability, but I think he can, just like the Bible says that when, when Jesus came, he, he uh, set aside a lot of his divine prerogatives. He, he, he needed to experience what it means to be, to be like us. And so a lot of those things of his God abilities he shelved them for a while. Well, that's a little bit too deep even for me. But he said, God, I believe God sat down and, and enjoyed Adam naming the animals. God wants to see what you will do. He wants to see, he wants to allow you to choose and to give you the freedom to decide. But we need to choose well. We need to seek his guidance. And that's the key, I think. So you can do anything you want. And so when he tells you that, when you sense in the Bible or in your spirit that God is saying, do what you want to do. You tell him, you tell God, I want to do what you want me to do. God says, that's the right energy. All right, now, here's the pecan, and it is a pecan. How else could you have a pecan pie? There's the pecan. It's only one. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to put it in the lid. Here's all. Uh, I, one of my favorite comedians, he's passed away many years ago, he says, I like rice. He says, every once in a while I'll be sitting around, he said, I, I'm hungry and I'd like to eat something where there's 2,000 of them. <laughs> so you can eat rice and and it's 2,000 of them if, you, if that's what you were hungry for. Well, that's what rice is. This reminds me of that bean joke, and it works for rice, too. I heard, uh, I think it was Goober Lindsay many years ago, he says, we were so poor when I was growing up. He says, uh, when we used to eat beans for breakfast and drink water and swell up for lunch. <laughs> You, uh, you eat rice and, and drink water, and it, it swells up. Well, anyway, here we go. Let's see if I can do this. Should have made a funnel. I'm going to pour this back into here. I knew I would spill a little bit. Ah. Only a few grains spilled. Let me see if I can round them up. things in your life, lots of decisions. Am I going to do this? Let me 
me tell you something. When I was younger, I, I, I began reading, and I, I'd start reading a book. And after two or three chapters, I would say, this book is terrible. This book is awful, but I've got 25 more chapters. I just finished the book. I've been watching a show on TV, and so this, this is terrible. Let me tell you what, I'm older now. If I read two or three pages of a book, and I don't like it, I throw that book away. <laughs> if I'm watching a, you know, I never have watched an episode of the Three Stooges where I said, you know, I don't like this. I, uh, I just like it from the first slap and the first eye gal. I just watch it. And when I'm watching a movie and I said, you know, this, this movie is awful. And I, I change channels. But lots of things to decide. You and I need to decide, I don't want to do that. And I'm not going to participate in that. Lots of things and God says, I'm, I'm going to allow a lot of things to come at you, but it's not all for you. You need to throw some of it away. You need to say no to some of it. They're not important. They're not essential. You don't need them. Now, these are things that I do need in my life, and there's a lot of those things. There's a lot of rice I didn't put in here. But these are the things that God says, you need that rice. But this is really important. This is a big thing. These are little bitty things. They're important too, but they're small things. They're things that do matter. But there's lots of them. Details. Small stuff. This is important. Now watch this. Watch this. I'm going to put that con right there. I'm going to mash it down. And that lid won't fit. Look at there. Can you see that? It, it won't work. You can mash it around and shake it. We've got to do first things first. We need to do the important things first. We need to give them our best attention. We need to... Let me show you what I'm talking about. Well, you've already seen it in reverse. God says, look at this. This is really important. Yeah, you need all these things. It's just food and drink and what, where you're going to go and what you're going to do, what you're going to wear. How's that going? He said, no, this is really important. And there are some things that God says, you got to have this. you got to have this. Is so, this is very, it's, it's non-negotiable. No, I'm going to put that back here. Let's do that again. If I put this in first, figure out I need to empty my life, and this is what God says, you gotta have this. This is important. You gotta have it. more grains that I spilled. Now that, that, that means something. That's important. Look at you, let God show you what he thinks needs to go into your life first. What needs, what matters, what makes it. And a lot of the stuff, maybe you just need to spill it and let it go all together. God wants everything. He's put a lot of things in your life. And a lot of it fits. A lot of it is supposed to be there. But sometimes I, I see more and more people that they come to the pecan and they just say, well, I don't have room for this. They just throw it away. Or they put it in their pocket or it goes away. I see a lot of people whose lives are filled with rice and they don't have any pecans in their life. Do you know what that means? Do you see what I'm talking about? They, they're being forced by what an author called the tyranny of the urgent. In other words, oh, I've got to do this. I've got to get this done. I've got to do it. No, you don't. 
And this is just a lot of stuff we think we've got to do, and we really don't. And uh, sometimes we do things out of place, out of way. Show attention. Ask God to show you what is the most important things in your life. And put them in there first. And you'll find that everything else will fit. Everything else will fit if you've got the important things in there first. All right? It's a lot to think about. Especially if you're a little boy or a little girl. Maybe some of them are watching this morning. Okay, Brother Danny, come and lead us again if you would, please.